can you describe a little bit, uh, are there differences that you're seeing between how different countries are approaching AI, both in R&D and commercialization, uh, particularly parts of Asia, maybe Africa, how does that compare to how we're looking at AI in the US? You know, the, the current, gener uh, it's worth talking about the, the history of this because when I was a young graduate student, AI was the thing. And then 30 years later, it became the thing again. And what happened in those 30 years it was called the AI winter, where literally nothing happened. And many people have sort of wondered, why was there so much progress, promise and it stopped? And the consensus among the experts is that the problems that were interesting required a lot more com computation than was available. And so the big breakthrough in the last few years has been the ability to do extremely powerful, extremely large data set analyses. Um, and those gains have occurred, there were roughly four universities that invented this stuff, basically Toronto, NYU, uh, let's see if I get that correct, and uh, Quebec and Stanford are, are four that come to mind. And each of them released open source libraries, and then immediately all of their graduate students were hired by Google, Facebook, and Baidu. So that's the way to understand how this actually worked. And I think so the predominance of the workers are collected in those three, three firms, and now there's a whole wave of people coming out to other firms in other countries. So this is a technology that America is a leader in. It's reasonable to assume that China will be a leader through the Baidu connection and, and perhaps others. Um, we've taken a position that the research that's going on should be in the open. In other words, it should not be militarized. It should not be kept in secret. People should be publishing papers. It should be generally available for all sorts of obvious reasons. And, and there are there are different initiatives. Elon Musk has been very vocal about Yeah, and so Elon, for example, funded uh, through Y Combinator a group called OpenAI, um, which is again trying to move the research forward. Um, there, are, there are debates as to whether we can get to the vision people are talking about with the current technology. Um, I'll give you an example that you build these systems. So I'll give you an example of a self-driving car. So if you found a, a self-driving car today, company today, what you would do is you get a bunch of money from venture capitalists who I'm sure would give it to you. Um, you get a bunch of engineers to program the computer to watch how drivers drive, okay? So the driver in California would learn how to drive 60 miles an hour in a 55 mile zone, you know, do the rolling stop, all the kind of stuff. Um, and the car would mimic human behavior, perfect. So what happens is the policeman calls you over and you say, sorry officer, I was not driving, okay? So the policeman asks the car, the car has a voice actuated you know, command, and it says, I don't know why I did it. <laughs> and the policeman says, really? <laughs> and if the policeman were a computer scientist, the policeman would also know that these systems can't explain today how they learned something. So that's a big area of research, right? So that's an example of something where we need some breakthroughs. And people are working on that. What do you do personally to avoid that it goes into the dark side. Well, so so m my strong opinion is that this stuff should be, all the technology we're talking about should be developed in the open. I don't mean open source, but I mean open in the sense people know what they're doing. It needs to be debated, and furthermore, it needs to be for the benefit of everyone. So I start from the premise, right, it's obvious. I start from the premise that our goal is to make people smarter. And when we say people, we don't mean rich people, we mean everyone. As a result of Google, the average human, at least the 40% the that are now connected, can have access to a database that makes them infinitely more knowledgeable and infinitely more entertained, promoting Google for a sec here. That's a major increase in human intelligence, right? And you can make the same argument for Facebook and the other services that have been so transformative. right? So it's important that this technology be built in that context to empower people to make them smarter. And I defy you to argue against me that making people smarter is a wrong goal. It's got to be the right goal. Yeah. One here.